This video is part of series videos presented by 123 Radiology Channel on YouTube. In these series we will we'll discuss ultrasound in obstetric and gynecology. The placenta is named for its appearance, in Greek meaning flat cake, and is responsible for the nutritive, respiratory, and excretory functions of the fetus. The placenta is often overlooked in the routine evaluation of a normal gestation, receiving attention only when an abnormality is detected. In this lecture, we present the imaging characteristics of the normal and abnormal placenta. Gross anatomy. Typically, the placenta is discoid in shape. Normally it lies along the anterior or posterior wall of the uterus, and may extend to lateral wall with increasing gestational age. The term placenta weighs about 470 grams, and measures about 22 centimeters in diameter, with a thickness of 2 to 2 and half centimeters. Placental thickness is usually directly proportional to gestational age, to the extent that it can often predict the gestation weeks. The umbilical cord typically inserts at the center of the placental bulk. The normal placenta on ultrasound appears as a uniformly echogenic structure, along uterine wall, with a deep hypochoic band separating it from normal uterine myometrium. This retroplacental hypochoic band is vital to rule out implantation disorders, and its normal appearance should not be confused with retroplacental hematoma. The umbilical cord inserts into the center of the placenta, and into the fetus at the umbilicus. Variation in insertion can occur. For example, Marginal insertion and velamentatus insertion may be seen. Several variations in placental morphology are seen. These include Single lobe discoid placenta, this is the most common scenario. Bilobed placenta Succentariate lobe Circumvallate placenta And placenta membranacea A bilobed placenta, also known as bipartite placenta, is a variation in placental morphology, in which the placenta is separated into two near equal lobes. If more than two lobes are present, it is termed a trilobed, four lobed, and so on. The estimated incidence is about 4%. It is associated with velamentitis insertion of the cord. Sonographically seen as two separate placental discs of nearly equal size. The cord usually attaches to a thin connecting rim of chorionic tissue which bridges the two lobes. Less commonly the cord may insert into one of the lobes. It carries an increased incidence of type 2 vasoprevia. It may increase the incidence of postpartum hemorrhage due to retained placental tissue. A succentariate lobe is a variation in placental morphology in which a smaller accessory placental lobe is separate from the main disc of the placenta. There can be more than one succentariate lobe. The estimated incidence is about 2 per 1,000 pregnancies. By ultrasound it is seen as a smaller separate lobe of similar echo texture to the main placental disc. It is important to establish the location of any connecting vessels, and in particular to look for any vascular connection crossing the internal os, vas aprevia. It has increased incidence of type 2 vas aprevia and increased incidence of postpartum hemorrhage due to retained placental tissue. The differential diagnosis includes 
bilobed placenta in which the two lobes are usually of similar size. And twin pregnancy with two placentas. Circumvallate placenta, refers to a variation in placental morphology, which result in a small chorionic plate. The prevalence is estimated to be around 1 to 7%. Ultrasound may show a peripheral rim of chorionic tissue, appearing as an echo-dense ridge, named placental shelf. Associated complications include higher incidence of placental abruption, and increased risk of intrauterine growth restriction. Placenta membranacea is an extremely uncommon variation in placental morphology in which placenta develops as a thin membranous structure, occupying the entire periphery of the chorion, may be associated with abnormal placental adherence. This is reported in up to 30% of cases. By ultrasound, the placenta circumferentially covers most or all of the entire uterine wall. Recognized complications includes Accompanying placenta previa, intrauterine growth restriction, recurrent antepartum hemorrhage, second trimester miscarriage, fetal demise, postpartum hemorrhage, and retained placental tissue post-delivery. Placental thickness tends to gradually increase with gestational age in a linear fashion. Sonographically. This can be seen to be approximately 1 mm per week. And the thickness of the placenta can be used to approximate gestational age. The maximum thickness of a normal placenta at any point during pregnancy is often considered to be 4 cm. An abnormally increased placental thickness falls under the spectrum of placentomegaly. This can happen with number of conditions and is associated with increased risk of placental insufficiency. Causes of placentomegaly include Upper limit of normal variation Fetal macrosomia Fetal high drops Maternal medical conditions like maternal anemia and maternal diabetes Anisoechoic abruption can mimic a large placenta on ultrasound. An abnormally decreased placental thickness can be seen with placenta membranacea and chromosomal anomalies like trisomy 18. Placental grading, GRAM classification, refers to a ultrasound grading system of the placenta based on its maturity. This primarily affects the extent of calcifications. Calcium deposition occurs throughout pregnancy as a normal physiologic process of placental aging. The amount of calcium deposition is known as placental grade. In the first two-thirds of gestation, the calcium deposition is microscopic. After 33 weeks more than half of the placenta have macroscopic calcifications which then increase till term. Placental calcium deposits are detected sonographically as echogenic foci. In some countries the use of placental grading has fallen out of obstetric practice. The grading system is as follows. Grade 0. The placenta shows uniform echogenicity with no visible calcifications. The chorionic plate is smooth. Grade 1. The placenta shows scattered tiny calcifications, with subtle indentations on the chorionic plate. Grade 2. The placenta shows large basal calcifications or hyperechoic areas, with large indentations on the chorionic plate. Grade 3. The placenta shows extensive basal calcifications and circular echo densities outlining the cotyledons, with complete indentations on the chorionic plate. 